Hi, welcome to Disney to Universal. If you are new here, my name is Nicola and today's video is an overview of Pinsane Pins Circus at Preston, which is a Disney pin trading event in the UK and also my haul from that event. So this event took place on the 30th of September to the 1st of October. So that's a Saturday and Sunday. I chose to go on the Sunday. Tickets are £10 per person per day. So that's £10 per adult. Children actually go free with a paying adult. With your ticket, you get refreshments all day. So that's drinks and some little snacks, usually biscuits. And you also get your lunch, which is sandwiches, crisps, and a snack as well, usually some kind of biscuit and drinks, teas, coffees, juices. You also get some free raffle tickets to win some prizes. The only thing is, is we never actually stay till the very end, which is when they do these. So still don't know what this is all about, as in what kinds of prizes and things you get. Um, my daughter comes with me and she gets quite tired. So it's a long day for her. Uh, if I was there, I would be from the very start till the very end on both days. The day I went, which was Sunday, the hours were from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. We were there from quarter to 11 till quarter to four. So I got four hours out of the event, which was still a lot of time and a lot of pin trading. I found the event really good fun. I went to the London event, which happened in July of this year and I did a video on it and I said it was very intimidating. I got very hot and bothered and it's a lot. It's quite stressful. Um, because you don't, you know, you generally don't know what's going to happen with the pin traders, if they're going to do a trade. So it can be a, quite a lot. I found all of the people at this event to be very friendly and nice, very easy to talk to. And obviously everyone that goes has a very similar interest. So it's easy to talk about pins. Even if you don't know much about them, they may give you some helpful tips and hints and just generally talk to you about pins. So that's really nice. There's the event organizers who are pin sane, but they also have lots of helpers around the room uh, or rooms. This time it had two rooms. So that was nice. You, um, They always have a little wooden badge on. And so I had very nice interactions with Bob, who was one of the helpers, and also with the Maynard family, one of the ladies from that family. She was really nice and helpful and very honest about the trades and things we were doing, considering I didn't have very much information on the prices of my pins or what they were worth. She really wanted to make sure it was nice and fair um, for the pins she was taking from me to make sure I was getting enough pins and things back from her in value. So that was really nice. She didn't have to do that, but she did. So I have some clips to show you. So I'll pop those in here as well and talk through them. So this is the first room that you walk into at the Preston event. It is a nice size and pin stain at the very bottom. And this was the second room, which was even bigger than the first room. So even more traders in here. And this was one of the Pinsane free trading boards that you could go to. This one was next to Bob. And here are the limited edition pins at the top. All very nice. And open edition and mysteries on the bottom. This is to show you an example of one of the tables. So I do go through this in quite a bit of detail, like her whole selection of pins. I think this was fantasy on this board. Um, then there's some loose pins surrounding and then I think the next board we're going on to is most likely fantasy again but it's just to show you all the different kinds of layouts and setups people will have again I think that one was fantasy then moving on to one of her pin books a lot of pin trading pins on this one she does have a good range and selection of different kinds of pins. So most of the time they do separate when they have fantasy pins and they'll keep them into one sort of aerial. They'll make you aware um, because some people might not know that certain fantasy pins are fantasy and not tr tradable in the parks. Uh, so I did like a lot of this lady's pins that she had. 
But at this point, um, when I was recording this video, I it was we were just quite new into the event. We hadn't been there very long, and I was trying to get more footage this time. And also, we hadn't really started to trade um, because you know you do have to <laughs> almost work up a little bit of courage to make that first meet and greet and try and make a trade. But looking back on this footage, there's definitely some pins that I seen that I was like, ooh, if I'd been back to her um, table, I definitely would have asked for a trade. But yeah, some lots of them, um, different price ranges. They will put the prices on some of their pins. Uh, usually they're on the front, but if not, they're on the back. And if they don't have prices on, then you would just ask about it um, or just ask what kind of price range does this go to? And also you would ask, um, I think they'll either have signs saying you can buy and trade um, or you would just ask them the question, are you trading or only selling or both? And they'll answer that for you. A lot of the sellers do have a lot of pins, so it can seem like daunting to go through their entire collection, but it is worthwhile if you have the time to do it, to go through everything because you might not be aware of certain pins that are out there and or if you're searching for specific pins you can either ask them because some sellers are very knowledgeable on what pins they do have but if not uh, just go through everything to see if you can find what you're looking for now this is the pin same pins store and this is showing you the prices they have little stickers on their pins this is the five pound and ten pound board that they usually have at every event uh, you can get some really nice pins on here as well. It's worth looking at. Really good fun. Love these kinds of boards. Makes it nice and easy and simple to look at. And here are their rack pins. And also box sets. But there's such a variety and lots of new things. They're always getting new items. So every time you come to the store, there will be something new for sure. Uh, it's, these are some of the box sets, which can be quite pricey for some of them, but nice to look at and good to know the price is there. And this was one of the games they were doing. So it was a everybody's a winner game. And this is me picking mine. Always going to go for a pinky colour. And my daughter chose the cream. And I love playing the everybody's a winner kind of games because you know you're not going to be disappointed. There's going to be something. We had no idea what the prizes were. There was no indication as to what the prizes were either. So this is my daughter opening up hers and it has one of those scratch card stickers. We were a little bit like, okay, what's this about? Did we peel it? But no, it was a scratch. And she won 20% off a rack pin. And I won a free £8 rack pin, which was any pin with a yellow sticker. So this is me having a look. I was pretty sure I knew which one I wanted as I had been after this pin for some time. And I thought it was in the yellow section, which it was. And this was my prize. These are the pins we gave for the open edition Pingo game. This is always worthwhile doing, even if you're just buying one ticket, because the prizes are hundreds of pins that they split into a few categories, like line, two lines, and a full house, something like that. But there's multiple winners, and you get loads of pins. It's awesome. This is to show a, another version of one of the tables. They've got different categories there in folders. We have boxes with pins in, pin books, and loose pins that are box sets, things like that. They have these wallets. These are sold by Stu Pins. More pin folio pages and folders. Lots of different ways to be displayed on this table. This is another official pin same pin game. This is the Chinese auction. We bought 10 tickets for £10. I think the more tickets you buy, there's a better deal you could do. But you see all the prizes that are next to the buckets. If you're interested in trying to win one of those prizes, you would put one of your tickets into the bucket and they call out one of the numbers at the end from each of those buckets and that person is the winner. So it's a really fun game, but they is a lot of competition. Here's to show you another example of somebody's table. Had quite a lot of expensive pins on this one, but we did still do a trade because most tables will still have 
lower value pins that they're not so picky about doing a trade for. And here is another example of somebody's table. This is how they had all of their pins in these kinds of folders with the slots. And this was one of my daughter's favorite places to stop. I will put all of Pinsane Pins details down below in the description box for things like their website and their Facebook group and their Instagram. And it's definitely worth following the Facebook group because that is where they do things like their live sales or their Disneyland Paris pickups and all extra little bits and bobs. Not everything is the same on their Instagram. So Facebook is definitely where most of their action happens. So you definitely wanna be on there. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you our haul. So I'll start with my daughter's haul first. So here is the overview. She got a total of 14 pins. Like I say, she did struggle a bit more at this event, I felt. Um, like she never gave as much time as the London one. So I feel like she still got a good, decent haul, but compared to mine, it's a lot smaller. <laughs> this is the stitch from this box set that she opened at the event. She got this uh, Stitch Halloween box set from Loungefly. This was what she uh, chose with her 20% off code that she got from the envelope game she's decided she likes to collect stitch as well so this little pineapple one for some reason she fell in love with and chose that to trade she absolutely loves the munchlings so she's trying to collect these she's been after this one forever so she was over the moon buzzing excited when she found this one to trade for and then we've also got the Thumper one and the Donald. And we've got this one. We've got these two from the same person, as you can see her cards here. So we've got this Eeyore and this Minnie Mouse one again, which she fell in love with. She's also collecting these cups. Brilliant to find four new ones of these to add to her collection. She's getting quite close now to finishing this one. And she's also started recently collecting Grogu. She fell in love with this pin. For some reason this really spoke to her, so she wanted to trade for that. She's also collecting this series of um, Loungefly pins. So this was a new one to add to her collection. And she really liked this Loungefly as well, which she thought, I think she thought this was from a set she's collecting, but it's actually a different one, so. Um, she may need to collect that one now as well. But yes, this was her collection of pins. So she did really well to go. She knew what she was going for and chose well. Okay, so now on to my pin haul. I'm going to do, do this in little sections because mine is a larger amount of pins. And there's a few different kind of categories I was going to show you. So we'll start with this category first. These pins are from the Facebook group that I was talking about, where this is a live sale and this was just something they posted on their um, on their Facebook page asking if anybody wanted to add any of these into their pickup packs. You can do pickups if they're going to be close enough to an event, otherwise you would just get things posted out to you. These are the Primark Munchling pin packs and I just, at the time I hadn't been to Primark so I didn't know if I was going to get my hands on these. So I thought, oh, I'll just add this pack on because this was the pack we wanted the most. So for £3.50, which is it cost, is what we paid for it. Uh, so this was from, like I say, the live sale. I got this for £10. Uh, originally, I think these were $22, something like that. And it was from one of the previous Walt Disney World um, Disney pin events that they do. So really cool pin. This is my very first Meet the Robinsons pin that is starting off my Meet the Robinsons collection. I am Nicola Robinson, so I thought, and we do really love this smoothie, so I thought I wanted to start collecting Meet the Robinson pins because it works <laughs> and we like the movie. This pin comes on a postcard. I'll show you the back. So there's the back of the postcard and the front and a very cool pin. So very, very happy to get that at that price. Jumped on it, I managed to get it before anybody else. Very happy with my pickups. 
Okay, so this is the pin that I won, an eight pound pin from the envelope game that we played. So I paid four pounds to play the game and I chose the envelope that gave me this or gave me a chance to buy a eight pound rack pin from the Pinsane store. So I chose this one. I've been after this pin for some time and to get it for that price at four pounds technically is a really good deal. Or, you know, if we're going to really dive into the mechanics of it all, we paid, we got two envelopes, so eight pounds, which pays for this. And we also got 20% off another pin or any amounts of pins that we bought. So still slightly winning there. Stitch dressed up as Aurora. Adorable. I'm not really a stitch collector, but some of these really speak to me. So yeah, this one it will go into my Sleeping Beauty collection. And this pin I keep in separate because this is the only pin I paid for. The the trader wasn't interested in any of my traders to swap with this. So she valued it at £10. So I paid £10 for this Little Mermaid pin. And here is a close-up of that Little Mermaid pin. This part of the background is all sparkly. We've got Sebastian and Flounder here. Really nice pin. It's copyright Disney on the back. So I'm not sure if this is an official Disney Parks pin. Uh, so I was a little bit like, mm, have I paid too much for this? I don't know, but I still love the pin at the end of the day. And here's the close up of the stitch dressed as Aurora pin. The next category of pins to show you, these were all from the free trading boards that are run by Pinsane Pins. So this particular, I got all of these pins off the same board, but at different times throughout the day. The particular pin board that I got all of these off, which you might be able to tell, was the board that had some of the limited edition pins at the top and then the rest were all like mystery, open edition, etc. on the bottom. So my very first pick was this Hercules All Stars pin, which is beautiful. And I also picked up this Archimedes pin and this Hercules Vars pin. I seen these two. I really like both of these as well. This was the one I had my eye on straight away, wanted it 100%. I thought, well, I'm sure I can't be super greedy and try and take these two at the same time. So I left them. Unfortunately, I was I was I was gutted to leave them because I really wanted them, but I thought, no, you can't be greedy and take them all. So I just chose this one and these two that first time. And I kept going back to the boards to check to see if there was anything um else that I liked and went away around the tables I came back right towards the end of the day and these two were still left on the board so immediately I was like right I'm grabbing them so I got this Peter Pan cuckoo clock one and this fifth anniversary of Zootopia pin then I also saw these little Christmas stockings, a Mickey and a Pluto one. But I got those at the same time as well. I am starting to collect Christmas and Halloween pins, so but I'm very specific about the ones I liked and I liked the look of these, so pick those up. I absolutely love the free trading boards because there's just no pressure at all. You don't, you're not gonna get told no. It's just nice, easy, as many times as you want to trade, trade and I love it. I love keep going back to check on those boards. So yeah, did really well off of the free board. And here's a closer look at those pins. Love the sparkly glitter and the metallic in this pin. Absolutely gorgeous, love it. This one is just cool, love anything Zootopia. Gonna pick that one up. And these are really cool as well. Can't believe nobody jumped on this one. Love Mermaid. So definitely picking that one up. I'm in love with Archimedes. I love the sword and the stone. So this this was getting definitely added to my collection. Was so happy to find him. Vases are always super cool. Love this Seuss one. And here are those stocking pins. Okay, so this category was the pins that I was going in search of at the event. 
This pin here is what made the whole event worthwhile to me, this Prince John villains candy popcorn treat bucket. Spoiler for an upcoming video, but I didn't get this pin, so I was devastated and needed to pick this up at the event if possible. And I couldn't believe my luck. Stu Pins had three of these on his board, which is crazy. Uh, if you don't know Stu Pins, I will pop his details down in the description box below as well because he is worthwhile knowing. He does Disneyland pickups too and also sells all of the Pinfolio products. As far as I'm aware, it's the only person in the UK that I know about. Um, and he's also great to trade with. Always check him out when you go to these events. And if not, check him out online. So absolutely over the moon to pick this up. As you can see, I've got two of these. Did a bit of a mix up with these ones. I traded twice for them because I didn't really have a good system in place for holding all of the pins that I traded for. I was just kind of putting them into one place and couldn't see easily what I had. So a little bit of a mistake there, but it hopefully will be a good trader. This was a brand new set that I was after that I came about online just by browsing different types of mystery boxes. And I am obsessed, always have been obsessed with magic and potions and things like that. So these potion bottle vials, uh, villain vials, I think they're called, is something I was hoping I was going to run into at the pin event. I only found these two, but 100% wanted to trade for them. This is actually another Stu Pins trade. So I got those two from him. These were definitely the favourite trade of the day, these two pins. I found this from another trader. And then these were all from different traders as well, the Kingdom of Cute series which I'm not after every single one I don't think just the ones that speak to me more and are to do with the transportation or attraction specifically so yeah this section was buzzing about getting because these are the ones I was going for in the first place okay and here is a close-up look of these pins as well how cool are those potion bottles? I have no idea if I'm going to be able to collect the rest of the set, but I will work on it for the rest of my life. And then these are just absolutely adorable. This is just a category showing some that are on backer cards. Uh, no rhyme or reason to this set, but here we go. I really like these character gift boxes, pins that are limited edition. I probably should have bought these really on Shop Disney. You just never know what are going to sell out and stick around. I thought they might have gone down in price or something, but I should have bought them. Like I say, you live and learn some of these things. So I picked up this Zootopia one. I've got this Tiana one. Then I found this, another one of those all stars like the Hercules one I got. This is another limited edition of uh, Vanellope from Wreck-It Ralph beautiful pin. This is another one I regretted not buying on Shop Disney. So when I seen it that somebody had it I was super happy they wanted to trade. This is adorable. I love castles and I'm really after sort of cutesy Mickey and Minnie Mouse and they are definitely that in this pin. So really happy to pick that up. These are some of the pins I got from Bob. Really great selection that she had. Love this up. Polaroid of them young, super cute. I'm obsessed with the three fairies, so loved seeing this pin there. This is actually two pins that join together in the middle there. A beautiful, beautiful gold sort of framing around it. And then there was this Cinderella, the stepmother and the two ugly stepsisters. So she had a great selection of pins that I got from her. I think I got a couple more uh, that were loose. And here is a close-up of these pins. I'm obsessed with the Zootopia one. That one is super cool. I love that these have this little mini pin that's attached to them, which you can take off and have on its own if you'd like. So a bit like the Tiny Kingdom pins. But I love all of the bits and bobs that are in this particular gift basket. It's just so Zootopia. 
this one's cute as well but i'm not obsessed with tiana i just it was a good trade at the time uh this one i love love seeing anything with the vanellope and the sweets side of the movie so really cool pin very very glittery how cute and adorable are mickey and minnie here little tink there uber cool pin this one and like i say gorgeous this very very pretty and then this little one from cinderella and this is the last board of pins so most of these pins i was aware of definitely within my orbit definitely was on the lookout for as well but not so much as the board previously so i will show you these you've got this lenticular beauty and the beast one here this is the supporting cast cinderella pin and you've also got the supporting cast of robin hood there's the windows of love beauty and the beast stained glass windows pins love these you've got the gingerbread pins you've got these a113 pins here i love this woody one it's absolutely adorable on the back of the car with the license plate, classic, like iconic little scene. Um, you've got the, I think it was called the BU series of Russell here, adorable. Love collecting up pins as well, but they have to be a certain kind of up pin. I'm not interested in all of them. I'm not going to be a completist there. I don't think a complete is for any collection, to be honest. It's what pins speak to me. I've got this Rapunzel and Flynn pin. Uh, some of the wishables, I do like all of the wishables, but I'm only wanting to collect the ones I'm really drawn to. So pick these two up because I was jealous of my little girl's set and these were in her set. This is a set I was debating am I going to start collecting because there was a few pins I really liked out of the collection and um, yeah I'm definitely wanting all of the pins now definitely want to complete this set and this was a pin I had never seen before no idea what it was I just absolutely loved it because I'm obsessed with sword and stone pins and this one is just uber uber cool looking okay so you've got this lenticular pin here of chip very cute love the colors on that pin it's beautiful um so yeah there's that one here's the supporting cast i think these are really good pins i love the size of them as well i don't think i don't need all of these pins but for the collect for my collections i would want one of each of these for every collection that i collect so another one to add to my collection these are so beautiful I collect Rapunzel, so this one was cute. Love this one. Love anything with Russell, really, but this is such a beautiful pin. Just how cute. Um, I think I need to get the whole of this collection as well because I've always loved them, been drawn to them, so yeah, I'm going to 100% collect this collection. And then look at this pin. So at the time, I wasn't sure what this was. And this is actually a limited edition pin from Disneyland Paris. So it actually was a bigger trade needed, but worth it. If anybody knows what this is about, please let me know in the comments because I'm like, is this to do with some kind of trading event or something? This MF? No clue. Yeah, and these Peter Pan pins are absolutely beautiful when you see them in person. I'm obsessed with the Nana version of the of these pins with her with the house. Really needed to pick that up. I saw it a couple of times at the event and I think I was doing other trades so I didn't want to interrupt that at the time, but now I miss now I've missed out on it. I'm really gutted so I need that Nana pin. Um and the full collection. Like I say, the wishables of Cogsworth and Lumiere. And these will be added to my Beauty and the Beast collection. 
So I forgot to film my outro for this video, so I figured I'd do it to this very adorable picture of a mini Mickey with his mini board and mini pins selection. And he was from the Maynard family. Really, really cute. But that is everything for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.